Hi, we're in the next part. I really did not intend to make this long or many parts, but it is, so I guess we deal, right? Um, we're still talking about the rejection of the church and how it is that they're currently being placed under a lot of pressure by attrition to compromise and settle because they keep on getting knocked down just when they're about to meet some kind of a breakthrough. But I am trying to also highlight that that's not really the breakthrough because if at all it was given by God, don't nobody close the door. He says in his word that um, he opens a door that nobody can close, right? That is one of the letters. Is. <clears throat> to the churches um, and indeed that can be applied broadly so to the rest of our walk never mind within an eschatological an, est an eschatological stance that whatever door the Lord opens nobody can close it guys like he is the creator of the universe and guys he is the almighty and demons tremble they shudder before his feet so ain't no demon gonna rock up and have the might the omnipotence frankly to actually seal shut a door that the creator has opened neither will he even have the bravado to try like demons understand their demarcations they have got a linear regression constraint set, constraint set basically within which they can operate they can't exceed the mandate that they've been given god by god and if they try they we know as it is written in god's word in the book of Re uh, not revelation but genesis that they get thrown into a chains because they left their first estate so demons know better than to exceed in their scope of activity that which god has allowed them legroom to do meaning that if at all something gets shut in your face it's only because demons have been given that you know constraint set god said okay take it whatever just like it happened in the book of job with job where god said have you considered my servant job hey you're gonna make me smite my own child fine go do this but you can't do more than that he satan that is could not kill job even though he could do all these other like menacing things to him so if at all there are menacing things happening to you if at all there are dominoes dropping in front of you that you couldn't afford to lose understand gauge thoroughly you know embrace them inhale and exhale them as oxygen that the lord god almighty has ordered it that it be that way and if he is omnipotent and not just all powerful but also omnibenevolent so he is all powerful and all loving he loves you enough to keep that door shut for a reason that you don't understand and if at all it is closed so that's his omnipotence it means that in all of his power he has protected you from something that you can't even see but he's loving because he's loving you can trust therefore and just to you can trust therefore that you were better off anyway without that particular opportunity guys imali the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil and many who have wandered after it have pierced themselves with many pains this individual that i'm speaking about right now who god gave me a dream about having signed this all over to some controlled opposition force that is running them all he is a man that did not trust the lord and who did not have enough fear of the lord to avert certain things he is a man that is in the scriptures always studying never coming to a knowledge of truth like if you don't know or understand if at all you when you when you read the scriptures if you don't come out of that with a thorough gauging of the holiness of god you have not been trained in christ you ought to see the wrath of god all the way from the old testament and the new you must see it in the case of ananias and Sapphira. ananias and Sapphira is the new testament some people think the wrath of god is only in the old testament new testament ananias and Sapphira. you know how they dropped there because they they lied they were dishonest about what it is that they gave the church what it is that they gave christ they lied and so they were struck dead and it was through a prophecy given yet another disciple in the church peter so if at all you're going to act like a little bit of an ananias eh? or a safira as a child of god you are going to be struck dead dude and you are going to regret having done that you 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 ananias and safira could not have possibly known who they were dealing with they they called themselves christians and yet they did not study the scriptures enough to gauge the holiness of god you know one of the first pieces of literature that I read when I first came to Christ was a book by R.C. Sproul, may his soul rest in peace, called The Holiness of God. And that book caused a whole bunch of goosebumps on me and it made me shudder because he highlighted stories in the Bible and exposited the holiness of God in his book so well that I left there trembling, understanding that, my goodness, all this time prior to my redemption, I was such a fool. I was going to hell. There is just this fear that overwhelms you when you truly are indwelt by the Holy Spirit and you read the scriptures. You tremble before them. Indeed, it is written in his word that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One brings understanding. And so therefore, it is absolutely wise to reject some offer of some illuminati-ish agenda. Do you understand? For Christ, even if it puts you in prison or keeps you poor, that's wisdom. To reject money, if at all, it comes with a little bit of a disclaimer or a, a, a term and a condition that says that you got to walk away from Jesus or you got to compromise in Christ. Goodness gracious, God is not mocked. God is not mocked. To those who think that they can stay Christian and still be Freemasons, what are you talking about? You cannot serve two masters. You will either love, serve, serve the one, love the one, or hate the other. You, you like The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you are reading the scriptures and you are not scared of God, like out of your mind, 
fearful of this holy God that, albeit being as giant as he is and can crush you in an instant, instant just doesn't because he is also loving and gracious. If at all, you don't come out of that with fear. You're lost. Either you're lost or you're, mis- you're under-trained. You're, you just don't understand what's going on there. So it is the fear of the Lord that keeps a poor person poor, if at all, upon being offered money. It comes with compromise against Christ. He is the creator of hell. He is the creator of the heavens. He is the creator of outer space, an environment that human beings cannot survive in. He is the creator of it all. And yet you dare to imagine you can like mix him with Beelzebub. You can mix him with sun worship. You can mix him with Baal, with demons, 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 demons. Baal is a demon. You think you can, or a fallen angel, whatever. You, you, you think you can mix the God of the universe with all that and still be okay because he made it clear in his scriptures that... If anybody runs to me, I will likewise not turn away because he told you that he is, you know, magnanimous, that he is forgiving, that he will take away all of your sins and remove them from you far as the east is from the west. All of that stuff you anticipate that because the Lord said that, that he's going to just forget about the fact that after you professed him as king and preached him for a minute and tasted the things to come, he, you think that you can just simply mock God on that day and then just come back and be like, but you said you'll forgive me if I run back to you. So every night after signing that heinous deal with the Illuminati, you continue to pray to God on some please forgive me i'm sorry for for doing what i did but i had to do what i had to do for my family or really so i guess you don't trust god to provide for your wife and your children you don't trust the lord to pay for your kids college tuition you don't trust the lord like seriously i might be in squalor and poverty but i have not in all of this time just like david said in the scriptures never have i been forsaken neither have i had to beg for bread david was young and yet he was old yet never had he seen the righteous forsaken nor his children begging for bread understand that i have never been made to suffer so much want that i was basically left bereft broke can devastate the reason why my enemies envy and covet me so much is because I have been preserved in my squalor. My conditions are not the best, but then again, the son of man also did not have a place to lay his head down at night to sleep, right? Foxes have dens and rabbits have got little holes in the ground, but the son of man could not lay his head down anywhere. But did the son of man ever go hungry other than when he was actively fasting? No, the Lord knows how to provide. He knows how to take care of his sheep. He knows how to go and fetch the one and leave the 99 behind. The Lord knows how to take, how to keep in a bunch those who belong to him. They will not be plucked out of his hand. So if you leave, you are never of him. You are Ananias. You are Zafira. You are giving God a fraction of what it is that you claim to have given him. And on that day, then I guess you get to be stricken dead, don't you? The gentleman, I don't know what's going on with him. I fret and I front and I freak out for him because of the fact that he tasted the things to come. He very likely might have already blasphemed the Holy Spirit. I don't know. But I'm kind of hopeful that he would be made to reach a some kind of a an area of conviction and repent and actually be embraced because he hasn't gone like that far out from the light i don't know like I, i'm hopeful that he might repent right and turn and so be healed but people like that christians i'm here to warn you that if you are a professing christian and you've been involved in church activity for a minute and you also have been suffering for a minute too i am here to warn you not to take this up uh, a harsh and a terrible time might be upon us right now as the church but we are also about to get freed the devil ramps up like no man's business he just inclines and inclines and steer like he he increases the heat in the furnace just like he did with shadrach meshach and abednego just when they're about to get released literally just before breakthrough that's when things get super incredibly intense He's trying to make people throw in the towel. Don't do it. Don't do it. The Lord knows what he has set apart for you. He knows exactly every project that he has given for you to win. He knows every bid and tender that you will, like, I guess, bid for, that you will win. And so all the others that you don't get, do not then go and partake in unsavory business practices just to make sure that you're the one that wins that contract. Just wait. It's literally that basic, guys. Waiting is one of the most difficult things to do and yet the primary requirement for us when we come to Christ. Wait on the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land. Be fail- befriend faithfulness. He will be the one to make your righteousness shine like the dawn. The justice of your cause like the noonday sun. You know what? Like a couple of days ago, the Lord said this to me when I was busy fretting and fronting over that random female that stole my Facebook fitness page. And God said to me, hammering it in and perpetually repeating it in my mind over and over again, hold fast to what is good. Like he kept saying that, like on a loop, like, yeah, literally, hold fast to what is good. Hold fast to what is good. Abhor, the whole scripture says, abhor evil, hold fast to what is good. But God only highlighted that part, hold fast to what is good. In other words, Garabo, fine. So your Facebook page was taken away, but look at what's actually working and grow that. I've given you ideas in other areas that are growing, that are thriving you. You might have other doors get like shut in your face. But baby, there are things you actually have to look forward to. You have like a whole full-time job that you can do. Hold fast to what is good. You just bought a camera you're excited by. It's all pink and it's cute and it's coming all the way from another country. Hold fast to what is good. You even had money to buy it. Hold fast to what is good. And I was like, but I want my Facebook where I grew it. I grew it with my own blood, sweat and tears. And I didn't sleep for over 24 hours because of that. 
well, I should have listened to God because then I would have fretted less. Will that add an, an additional day to my life? No, of course not. All it did was cause me more bags under my eyes. But now I know better. I've just been rejected. And in the middle of that rejection, prior to it, Christ made me speak and now I feel better. I will be alright. But as for that brother, or at least what appeared to be a brother, tears among the wheat. Separation is about to happen. Understand God is about to make it clear. That gentleman the Lord showed me has been handed over. Well, not so much handed over, but he has signed a contract of some nefarious nature and it's caused him to get everything he's ever wanted but with it there is this thing at the back of his mind that's on some but like I had to do this in order to get that that's a second guessing of Jesus it's blasphemous it's undermining what the king of the universe can actually do for you it is a distraction and it is also a, a quite a wealthy strategy by the devil to send as many people to hell as he possibly can he just threw in the towel just like that he gave up like he flat out gave up and so I don't know what's going on with him. The Lord has made it overtly understood by me that that man is to him at present in his current state as good as dead because he signed over some deal because he couldn't wait. He couldn't continue to struggle so much. And the guy is so young, guys. I think he's still in his 20s. He has so much time to wait. I am the one that should be handing my soul over to the Illuminati because I'm 38. I'm 38 and I'm like, oh, but my biological clock and I want to be married. Yeah, I'm the one that should be like, I guess all my life has flown right by my nose now. So I guess I might as well settle, but I haven't done it. So if I didn't do it and he has done it, what excuse does he have since he was still in, in like he's still at the peak at the prime of his life? No excuse. No excuse. Next part.